Okay, we got any jokes? Any New Year's jokes? No dad jokes for the New Year? <laughs> All right. Good morning and welcome to Worship with Aldersgate. Happy New Year to all of you here in the room and those of you joining us online. We're so glad that you're here with us today. And we know that the power of the Holy Spirit binds us together no matter if we're here in the room right now or if we're watching from afar or if we're watching later. Uh, we are one community and we praise God for that. Uh, today is a communion Sunday. That means that if we're here on site, we have the little individual servings provided at the entrance on the way in. And for you at home, please get uh, bread and juice, and you'll join us in that service uh, a little later on. Uh, the question of the day. I've got a question for you to get the juices flowing. When you think of the new year, when you think of 2022, what are some words that come to mind, some adjectives? Let me hear it. What do you have? Hope. Okay, Bonnie, she wins. There it is. 2022, what other words come to mind? What? Foreboding. Okay, the other side of that. Put it in the comments what you think. Uh, we will be starting our service this morning with our musician, Remote, because this is 2022, and that's how we're doing it. We'll tell you more about why during the, um, during the message time. And... Um, Remember, please, to drop your prayer requests in the comments. We'll be assembling those prayer requests into a prayer of the people at the end of the service. Are we ready for our remote musician? I heard the word hopefully. <laughs> well, that's excellent. Um, what else do I have to say? There we are. All right. I will turn it over to Mr. Johnny Nichols, Jr. give Johnny a hand for pulling that off in short order. Thank you, Johnny. Johnny had recorded such a nice greeting for us. He did say good morning and happy new year at the beginning of that video. Just so you know, he extends to you uh, his new year's wishes from afar. It's time for the children to come up. We have just a few. I'm so glad. It looks like the camera needs to switch over onto me. I'm seeing from the Zoom chat. Anyone else for the children's moment? Nope, that's okay. Well, so I have a pretty neat gift that somebody gave me a while ago, and I thought the new year was a perfect time 
to talk to you about it. Look at this very large eraser I have. That's right. Jesus erases all of our mistakes. Look at that. See? It's huge. And I thought, well, that's very clever because I'm sitting here next to my daughter, who is an excellent artist. And when you draw Lucy, and you say, I'm going to draw something, I'm going to draw it. I'm not such a good artist. So I'm going to draw a smiley face. Hey, there it is. Pretty good. And now I'm going to make it a, a bigger smiley face. See my smiley face? I know your my gifts are not in art. Uh, they're not. And then I want to put some ears on. Uh, oh, I don't like those ears very well. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to erase them, right? So that I can try again, so that I can make them better. You want to put some ears on my smiley face, Lucy? Lucy will now put perfect ears onto my smiley face. And I think sometimes um, when we go about our day, when we're doing things at home, yeah, those are good ears. Do you like them or do you want to erase them? Not yet. Not yet. Okay, she's going to work with them. But um, we go about our days when we're doing things. We go downstairs. We get our bowl for cereal. We pour the cereal. We pour the milk. Boop! Milk on the counter. Darn. I already made a mistake today, right? Already something happened. And it can be easy, especially if we are trying to do things well, but we mess up more than once or twice or three times. We think, oh, my goodness, and we just get discouraged. And it's hard to forgive ourselves for that, isn't it? Eva doesn't know because she's practically perfect in every way. <laughs> but it can be hard. It can be discouraging. And what we need to remember is that when God sees us make mistakes, like spilling milk isn't really a mistake. That's just gravity and physics and stuff like that. But when God sees us make mistakes, God says, you want to know something? I believe in you, and I've given you talents and gifts that I love you, and I see what you could be in the future, and I'm not going to hold that against you. I just want you to learn from it and try again, right? And it's like those mistakes are erased. Sometimes, though, we don't erase our own. We don't want to erase our own mistakes. We remember them, and we say, that's terrible. I'm miserable at pouring milk into my cereal bowl. I'll never do it again. Rage quit right? And so we have a hard time forgiving ourselves. But if we can remember that God forgives us and that God forgets our mistakes and all God asks us to do is to learn from them and try again, then maybe if we remember that God does that, that we can forgive ourselves too. And Lucy has already turned this into beautiful art. Uh, now it is a girl with a bow on her head and earrings, and it says, remember to smile with mistakes which is basically what I was saying. Well, thank you for helping with my sermon. Isn't that good? Do you know what? I'm going to keep this in my office just in case I make a mistake in 2022. Just in case there's one, I will have a very big eraser. Actually, that's funny. I just realized that. This is a huge eraser. <laughs> I think Jesus knows that we make lots of mistakes and we need lots of forgiveness. Let's have a word of prayer. Lord God, you are so gracious, and you do forgive our mistakes. We have a harder time forgiving ourselves sometimes. So I ask you, God, that as we look at a new year, that you would help us to be like you, to forget the past, uh, to focus on you, God, and to move forward into a future where we can try again. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Sunday school is on vacation today, so you get to stay and listen to the sermon. Yay! Or you can go hang out in the nursery with Rebecca. That is up to you. All right. Let's see. We're on just a teensy bit of a skeleton crew today, so I'm just going to adjust this camera, and we will move to the time of the message. Often, we would have special music right now. All right. Hey, look who, look who I have with me today. Sam is back in the co-host chair. All right. I will tell you why. I will tell you why. Look at that. She's so talented. I think she gets that art, art gift from you. Maybe. No. <laughs> Sam, says, Sam says modestly. <laughs> we know that it does not come from me. That is also the truth. If you're just joining us, we invite you to... 
Uh, drop any prayer requests that you have into the comments. They will be assembled into a pastoral prayer at the end of the service. Also, uh, we'll be so celebrating Holy Communion today, so um, go ahead and grab, if you're at home, um, grab some bread and some juice to do that with us then. All right. So I'm going to give a little setup, and then we can read the scripture lesson. Okay. I can read it. So I will tell you what, I have had a week. I don't know if any of you have had sort of an intense week, um, but I came into this morning really not knowing what to expect. And that is because of literally hearing from people every day this week about COVID exposures, close contacts. It just felt like I was surrounded. And I was, I was speaking with colleagues and a friend of mine in town said, you know, I'm thinking it's just, it feels like it's every other person, every third person who's saying, oh yeah, I was in a room with somebody or somebody in my household, or I was just at an event and then I found out later that somebody had COVID. It just feels like it's all around. And um, we thought, you know, maybe we should even go remote you know, just to kind of put a, a fire break in this thing, right? To not contribute to the, the spread. Because it seems like, um, you know, so many of you I know are vaccinated. A lot of us triple vaccinated. We love our vaccines around here. We praise God for the scientists and the vaccines. Um, we wear our masks. We do the right thing. And you still are hearing about this spread right now. It's a very aggressive uh, spread variant. And so, you know, maybe that would be the thing to do. And we decided, nope, nope, let's persevere. We will meet in church. But just so that you all know at home, everyone here in the building is wearing masks for the entire service uh, for the month of January, just to try. So I said, Sam, what if there's nobody in church on Sunday? What if it's like one year ago when we would have maybe 10 or 12? Yeah. And it's not as much energy in the room, so... It's nice that, good job, guys. Way to go. Way to show up. Way to showing up. Yeah, but I, I, because of the way I preach, I need the energy from the audience coming back. And if I don't have an audience, Sam is my energy. So yeah. <laughs> I said, please sit next to me for this message time. So the scripture lesson this morning is from Numbers chapter 14, verses 6 through 9. Joshua, son of Nun, and Caleb, son of Jephunneh, who were among those who had explored the land, tore their clothes and said to the entire Israelite assembly, the land we passed through and explored is exceedingly good. If the Lord is pleased with us, he will lead us into that land, a land flowing with milk and honey, and will give it to us. Only do not rebel against the Lord and do not be afraid of the people of the land because we will devour them. Their protection is gone, but the Lord is with us. Do not be afraid of them. Let's have a quick prayer. <laughs> I know that's true. And I will say. Right. Well, it's California. There's an earthquake. Huh. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? All right. All right. Looks like we're live again. So we're going to give a quick Welcome summary. Back. Welcome back. <laughs> Sorry about Facebook. It's because all churches are on Facebook this morning. <laughs> I'm going to summarize the start of the sermon, then we're going to pick up where uh, we left off. Uh, the summary of the start is the COVID reserve list. Um, is a real thing. A lot of people are getting benched from COVID and it feels uncertain as we start the beginning of the new year. But there is a scripture that can help us have courage um, as we consider moving into a new thing. So the scripture lesson may be in the comments. Hopefully Dee can drop them in the comments. Uh, we heard it already in the room. Um, but um, where should I start? Let's see. The context is that um, the Hebrew people had just been released as slaves from Egypt by God. God saved them. God raised up the leader Moses to deliver them, to take them across the Red Sea, to outrun the Egyptian army, and to get to the other side. And God said, I'm going to show you, I'm going to bring you to a land that I'll show you, a, a promised land, a land promised for you, but you got to walk a little ways. Yeah. So they get to the promised land, and then they send in some spies, and for 40 days... There's a spy from each of the 12 tribes, so the 12 guys sneaking around, looking at how wonderful the land is going to be. Recon, right? And they... Um, they get some fruit, some grapes, some figs. Did you see in the reading how, how many grapes? They had, a, they had a cluster of grapes that was so big, they had to carry it with two men. Two people. That's Super a lot of fruitful. Yeah, yeah, really, really nice. And so they come back and they bring a report. Right. So they're saying, well, there was really good fruit in the land, that's for sure. But we also saw the people who lived there. 
and we saw where they lived in these big fortified cities that are super impressive. And we saw that some of the people themselves were super impressive. They were giants, and they made us feel like grasshoppers in our own eyes. Right, right. they felt about this big yeah. compared to the grasshoppers. So like, you know David and Goliath, like they think it was some of Goliath's cousins or something. Oh, okay. Yeah. Goliath's cousin. That's, that's, yeah. that's, that's, yeah. that's in the future, if though. They didn't know. you a bunch of Goliaths, you know, you're like, yeah, yeah. yeah ex- right, so they give their report back to Moses and back to the whole people. And uh, Caleb's like, hey, you know, there's some really good things. There's some challenges. I think we should go for it. We should go take the land. This is the land that God's given us. And Joshua says, sure, let's do it. And then 10 out of 12 guys say, we shouldn't. This is terrible. We should go back to Egypt. Yeah, they're like, I don't know. I think we may fail. And, you know, it's just really tough there. And, and I just really don't think that we have the strength to stand against this going into this new place. Right. But not only that, they didn't stop there. This is the thing. They wanted to get people on their side. So they started rumors. And instead of just stating the fact of there's really good fruit and there's some big people and big forts, they said, well, there really wasn't enough fruit. I don't think that's enough fruit for us. Probably not good enough. The good thing, they made less good. And then the bad thing, they made worse. They said, terrible, everybody there is a giant. It's only Goliath there. But, but yeah, out of context. But yes, you know, it, so they exaggerated the bad and reduced the good. This is the thing about human nature. Why, when we hear good, optimistic news, are we like, I am not really sure, but the second we hear bad news, we're like, oh my gosh, yes, that's true, it's terrible. It must just be the way we're wired. But this is human nature, that bad thing, absolutely true. Good thing, I don't know, we better not risk it. It's because we don't want to fail. We don't want to suffer the disappointment. It's easier, you could argue a little lazier too, a little fearful, but it's easier to say, I probably won't work out. Probably shouldn't even try. You ever felt like that? Probably shouldn't even risk it. Maybe we'll just stay right here. So God hears this, and God, actually God interrupts the talking. All of a sudden, there's like a glowing light. The glory of the Lord shows up. (laughs) This is me imagining God like a parent. Enough! God is so mad. God talks to Moses. Have I not done enough for these people? God is saying just to Moses. This is exasperated mom who just made dinner, who um, whose kids didn't eat the dinner. Do I not do enough for you? Like, I just delivered you from Egypt. I don't know. Then when you were scared of the dark at night, I gave you a pillar of fire. And what else did God do while they were in the wilderness? He gave them food every day. Manna? He gave them water in the desert. He gave them quail. And, and that same pillar, when it wasn't light at the daytime, they're like, oh, the sun is really hot here. Cloud. Boom. Cloud. God is like, have I not been faithful very recently? Could they not look back a week or two and see what I just did for them? And now they're like, I don't know. I don't really want to risk it. Yeah. And they would rather go back to Egypt. They, they were all the way back home, back to slavery is what they were thinking. We, at least we know what that's like, right? Well, Caleb and Joshua, in their defense, they were like, no, no, guys, we can do it. That's the section of scripture we read to you. We can still do this. God, God is with us. God's like, you want to know something? None of you are going to do it. <laughs> he's, he's actually, this is the off script part. I don't know if this is encouraging or not. But God is like, I'm so mad, I'm going to send an epidemic and wipe these people out. And I was like, ooh, too soon. <laughs> no, no epidemics, please, from Scripture. No, but he's like, every one of you who saw the great wonders I did in Egypt is going to die in the desert. And Be- none of you are going to go into the promised land, right. except for Caleb and Joshua. Right, who had a good attitude. Well, and normally God, the, the way God does things at this time is, well, and we see it today, actually, Um, is to punish to the third and fourth generation. So Moses appeals to God. Moses says, Lord, look, how would it look? It's bad PR, Lord. You know, you just brought them out of Egypt. You just did all this. Now you're going to destroy them. That's not very good. How about 
um, you don't do that. How about you remember how gracious and forgiving that you have been uh, to your people and continue to forgive them and bring them into the promised land. So the compromise is, okay, the kids can go into the promised land, but this generation, no, no, because they have been faithless. They can't even remember what I did two weeks ago and trust me that I might be with them in the next week. And so that's what happens. That's why they wander for 40 years. They were right there, right? Right on the edge. They wander for a whole nother generation. Well, and before they wander, the next day they're like, oh, our bad, we sinned. Let's still go in and attack. And God's like, don't do it. And they go and they don't succeed. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So this is all the threshold, the border of going into a new thing, which is what brought this story to my mind. We're at the border of going into a new thing. And it is really easy for us to look at the challenges that are ahead and to inflate them. And it's really easy to look at the, the real promises of this year. We've got things to look forward. Hopefully, you know, we're at family vacation in May. Hopefully we're gonna do that. Our son's graduating from high school. Hopefully. We're getting accepted to college. Hopefully. He'll do great. <laughs> and then he's gonna go to college, hopefully. <laughs> So mean. He'll, he'll go somewhere and he'll succeed very well. But, this is a really big yeah. year, but there's some real promise in this year. So, you know, the things that are good, let's let them be good. Let's let them say, let us say, those things have a whole lot of promise. And there's some very real challenges. But let's not exaggerate them, right? Because of the consequences of that. First of all, like, we've forgotten the good that God has done for us this year when we do that. We've forgotten God's faithfulness to us this year when we start to say, ah, I don't know. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not making any, taking any chances with hoping right now. I'm just going to keep my head down. Never mind 2022. You know? Right? We're forgetting that God's been good and faithful this year in so many of the ways that you described. But the consequences too are that if we're timid and if we're not willing to at least try, at least give God that chance, at least show up so that God might bring that blessing, whatever it is. If we don't do that, we will miss out like that generation of Israelites. So what else do you think? Be hopeful. Be hopeful. It takes courage. Well, if you're holding on to God's hand, you can be hopeful, you know? That's right. If, if you're doing it in your own power, then good luck. Well, that's true. That's true. Because, and that's why we can have courage. It's not because it's like, oh, I'm awesome, so this year will be awesome. It's because we have an awesome God who's been faithful to us this last year and who will be faithful to us this year. It's because of who God is, not because of who we are. Yeah. yeah. So I hope that we can be people, not like the world around us, that takes an easy and fearful way out and cynical way out and you know, sits back and doesn't try, but that we can be people who have courage because we have God with us, who are brave because we have God with us. Not heedless and reckless, right? But at least to have the courage to show up. And that we can be people who, instead of buying into the cynicism that people have so often and going, oh yeah, I know, right? Like that. Um, that we can say, well, it might work out. It could happen. There could be a good thing. I think God is there, right? We're like that that salt, right, that changes the flavor of everything when we can bring that witness to the people around us. So, you know, here we are sitting at the beginning of a new year um, doing our broadcast model sermon, not really sure of what uh, this month will bring, but we are sure of one thing. What's that, Sam? Hope. Um, God is with us? God is with us. <laughs> you like Bonnie. Be like Bonnie. We're going to go with that one. And, and bring a big eraser because you're going to make mistakes. <laughs> it's part of the human condition. That's so. right. That's right. Amen. Well, thank you for preaching with me, Sam. Yes. All right. But you all have given me hope this morning just by showing up. Um, I was feeling a little bit of cynical and negative, but we got it. We got a church here with masks on showing up, doing their things. Good job. That's fantastic. Okay, so we are moving to a time of communion. I need to change locations, yeah. and you have some lines. Um, some lines. Uh, just a reminder to put your prayer requests in the comments. Um, also, our church, our communion table is open to everybody. 
Um, usually we would come to the front, but we picked up some juice and some uh, bread as you were coming in. You can go get some if you need some. Um, if you're at home, find something, a beverage, something to eat, and then um, we can partake of the Lord's Supper together. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. Before the mountains were brought forth or you had formed the earth, from everlasting to everlasting, you alone are God. You created light out of darkness and brought forth life on the earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ, in whom you have revealed yourself, our light and our salvation. By the baptism and in table fellowship, he took his place with sinners. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor and proclaim release to the captives and receiving of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, and gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ Christ is risen. Christ Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and those within the sound of my voice and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to take the bread. This is the body of Christ. Amen. And I invite you to take the cup. This is the cup of salvation. Amen. Okay, uh, just a reminder, we're going to have um, prayer requests, and we're going to do some announcements. And there's a link for the offering that's going to be dropped in the comments. Thank you, there, Sammy. I appreciate your help. All right. So a few announcements for us. I want to thank you, uh, by the way, for your donations and uh, contributions to this ministry. It is an encouragement 
to all of us, uh, these gifts and these blessings that come from you. All right, um, so this week we have the start of a brand new book study. We meet on Zoom for one hour on, on Wednesday at lunchtime. Uh, this is a good lunch break for those of you who are working during the day and for those of you who are retired, it's at lunch. <laughs> That's all, you can come then. Uh, we are starting this book, Soul Feast, by Marjorie Thompson. Uh, this is a classic. The, the ones that we've done recently have been new releases, but this one's been around for a while. It's time tested. It says spiritual practices for the start of the new year. So we invite you to join with us Wednesdays at noon. If you'd like to uh, come and to receive the link for that, just communicate with me in some way, and we will make sure that you are in on that link. Also, um, for those who are in the building, if you are able to stay for just a little bit after church, we want to start taking down the Christmas decorations. Um, the, we will start with the two Christmas trees, the one here in the sanctuary and the one out uh, by the front door, and that will get, give us a jump on returning us into the, now into the season of Epiphany by next Sunday. There is a, um, a, a funeral service here on Tuesday morning for Al Abjian. Uh, 96 years old, the oldest member of the church, passed away last Sunday. I want to tell you about it because it's such a wonderful, wonderful story. Al, um, some of you will remember, gave an interview in October about his experience in World War II with the Navy. We got to hear from him about being a signalman on the, um, on the ships, that, uh, the supply ships that went back and forth. Uh, he was in great health the whole way through. He, his wife died about three years ago, but he still lived in his, on his own at home, and his children came through and looked in on him. Christmas Eve, he was with his family. Christmas Day, he was with his family. The day after Christmas, last Sunday, he took his family, hosted his family for lunch at Kitty's Restaurant or for a meal there at Kitty's. And on the way home, as he was riding home, he said, I don't feel good. And so he died in the hospital just shortly thereafter, but was never sick and had just hosted his family for a meal. I think that's about the best thing that I've ever heard. Uh, so I wanted to share it with you, 96 years old. So here, uh, 10 a.m. on Tuesday is that memorial service. If you would like the link to watch it remotely, let me know and I will get it to you. Uh, the visiting hours are at Croswell's from 4 to 7 on Monday afternoon. All right, so I need some prayer requests there. Sammy, do you have any? Oh, yes, you do. Johnny on the spot here. Oh, I, you know what this says? You know what it says? COVID, 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 COVID. I was talking to Sam about the sermon last night. He's like, are we ever not going to talk about COVID? And I was like, take it up with the Lord. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry, it's what's going on right now. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Oh, we have a birthday today. Um, Jill McElroy, his uh, birthday today as well. Let us be in an attitude of prayer. Lord God, we thank you for your faithfulness that even though there's a lot of um, last minute changes and pivots uh, right now in this world that you are changing and pivoting. You are not changing, but you are helping us with those changes and uh, pivoting with us, God, to help us meet the challenges of the moment. God, we ask that you would send us out from this time as people who are encouraged, that wherever we go, that you are there with us, comforting us and strengthening us, showing us hope and justice and peace so that we can share this with the world. God, give us strength. We have many concerns among us this morning, Lord. First, I lift to you unspoken prayers and ask that you would minister to those who hold them. We begin by praying for those who are struggling with or in recovery from addiction, God, and for those with mental illness, depression, and anxiety. May this be the year, God, that those who struggle might find healing and help us to have patience and love those of us who surround folks who are struggling. We continue in prayer for Bob Kingsley's sister, Carol, and her cancer treatments, for Marie LaRose's friend, Marie Patrice, in hospice, God, we ask for healing, continued healing for Eli Spicer. And please be with my friend Jean's brother, Eddie, with a glioblastoma. God, help those who fell in the ice last weekend. We had a number who fell and help them heal up. 
We ask that you would help Sarah LaMonica to heal from a recent mi minor surgery. For her family member, Joan Devine, who's in uh, rehab, recuperating from COVID and pneumonia. And for her daughter, Jill Wilkinson, with COVID. God, we ask that you'd be with those who are affected by severe weather across this country. And we do pray for this country in 2022 and for our leaders. God, we pray for D. Kymock's friend, Lauren, who has COVID. For Holly Vitsky Lynch's daughter, Lauren, who has COVID. Um, for uh, Rob Wilkinson, who's being tested today. And for a granddaughter of Rob and Jill's, Ava, who has COVID. Uh, we have a prayer request from Nancy Ferretti at the Congregational Church uh, for Pastor Rick to see if he has COVID. We pray for those who mourn God over the holidays. If people have lost loved ones, um, people or pets, and ask that you would comfort them. Uh, we have a concern uh, for, uh, from Christine, uh, the joy of her cousin's life who recently passed from COVID and comfort for her family and healing for other family members, older and younger, who have COVID. God, give us strength. Give us strength. God, we pray for the healing and understanding for our church, for our nation, and our world. God, there are joys among us this morning. Um, we thank you that Savannah Helm is feeling better after double flu. We thank you again for the support uh, shown to Eli Spicer and prayers of thanks for his continued healing. Uh, we thank you for the vac vaccine effort and for all the medical workers and ask that you give them strength, God, as they face the month of January. God, just give them what they need. And we do thank you for the hope and promise of a new year, God, trusting that you will bring us good things and that you will equip us to deal with the challenges. God, you are very good to us. We ask that you would hear us now as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Every week uh, we celebrate or thank um, somebody in the church community because this church runs on volunteer power. Uh, this week I want to thank in particular uh, the trustees and other wise ones who helped me to be able to make decisions about uh, public health and this church. Thank you for being great sounding boards to give us a good way forward. So trustees, uh, Robin and the musicians, uh, thank you very much. Let's give them a hand. All right, I think that's what we got. Am I forgetting anything? Well, yes, we do have a final song from Johnny. Appreciate Johnny's flexibility and innovation. I will turn it over to him to send us out. I think I will stand here and stretch until the video starts is what I will actually do. There we are, closing him. Thank you. On the Everlasting Arms. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Me.
everlasting What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms I have blessed peace with my Lord so near Leaning on the everlasting arms